You are here on purpose with a purpose by design. Hello and welcome to Purpose by Design podcast and radio show, international radio show. I am Pamela Hinkle. I'm so glad that you are with us today. And let me tell you, you should be so glad you're with us today because my guest today is going to knock it right out of the ballpark. He has a message in due season for you. So you, if you can't see me right now, I have paper and pen because I'm a note taker. Whether I'm in church or I'm watching something somewhere, I take notes when somebody with wisdom appears that I can learn from. So I know you all want to learn. That's why you tune in. I know you're all about purpose. That's why you tune in. So if you're ready to be challenged and grow today, stick around. And so with no further ado, I want to introduce to you Pastor Jay Sean Jones. Woo! Welcome. God bless you, everyone. Thank you. God bless you, Pastor. And thank you. I appreciate that awesome intro. I got to carry you around. (laughs) Or maybe I could just play the recording of it whenever I go up. There you go. (laughs) I'll come with you. That sounds like fun. Well, you are the head of Believers Unlimited World Ministries and also a co pastor under the tutelage of your godfather, which is so very awesome. Not everybody can say that. And that's Glory Bound Missionary Baptist Church. Beautiful wow. man of God, yes. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have you here. And so can you just tell us a little bit about who is Pastor Jay Sean? Who are you? Well, amongst many titles, you can. some would say he's a master life coach, some would say Oh, Jay Sean, he's a transformation coach. Some would say, oh, yeah, he's a great pastor. What I say of myself is simply this. I'm a vessel. Mm-hmm. I'm a vessel that God uses to perform his good work. And I'm glad I was chosen, chosen to do so. I like to relate things to this. When a musician plays a beautiful song, no one goes up to the musician afterwards and say, man, I would really like to thank your saxophone for the <laughs> song that was played this evening. We usually go to the musician and say, wow, that was beautiful. So I'm the person who God plays this song through. Mm -hmm. So anything that I do tonight, today, if it resonates with you, thank you for listening. But let all glory be to God because he's the musician who's playing behind this vessel. Wow, that is beautiful. Vessel. You're his vessel. I love that. I might have to use that. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) I love that. Can I get a picture when you say that of of like a uh, a water vessel with Mm -hmm. different spouts on all this on all Mm -hmm. sides, and as that's turned as the water's as it's plugged in to the source, it's pouring through, but then pouring out into all different directions. Yes, that is what I picture in my heart as you're saying that. I can feel that. And I know that's exactly what how you have yielded and surrendered your life. Oh, yes. So if you get too close, you might get a little bit of Jesus drip on you. All right now. <laughs> you know what? That's good. We sometimes need to get we need to get wet again, you know? Yes. Uh, yes. No dry wood. We need we need some we need to be wet and absorbing all of that so we can make a difference in the world everywhere we Amen. go. Isn't Amen. that true? I like to say, yes. you know, the we are living epistles and the Jesus in you, Pastor, is going to affect somebody that I'm not ever going to see or meet. And and mm. then we're going to affect them. But then the Jesus in them or the God in them is going to affect somebody else. Right. So that's so true. So very true. And all we have to do is surrender and be the vessel. Oh, I like that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to write that too if you don't mind. Living epistles. I like that. We are the living epistles. Yeah. <laughs> let him use you. Yes. Yes. And you know, let him use you and be that vessel. You know, we have hummingbird mm-hmm. feeders and you pop that hummingbird feeder up there and you put all the all that yummy nectar in there and it just it, the, the birds fly up to it on all sides just like that vessel and just take, you know. And then when mm-hmm. they're full, they're gone and they come back. Uh, and and we don't let that 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 feeder dry out. We just continue to fill it, right? And just continue right. to let those birds take what they want. And 
And as you were talking about a vessel, that's an image in my heart that I saw that as we stay surrendered, as we mm. stay surrendered, right? And surrender yes. isn't like, you know, I don't have any life. I don't have you no know, surrender. And we know that there's someone who I call God, you know, mm -hmm. uh, who I call my savior that has a greater plan for not just me, but mankind. And as I mm. surrender to that great plan, I can stay full of what I need in every moment of the day so that others can come and take what they need to take along the way, you know? And that, as you mm. said that, that's just what I felt in my heart that uh, that you're even doing right now as you're on the podcast today. So, wow, I'm excited to receive um, as a as from you as a vessel today. So mm. tell us about, well, first I have to ask you this question. I got so excited, I almost forgot to ask you this one. If you had a billboard, okay. What would it say? Your billboard on a big highway or interstate, what would it say? <laughs> well, as you ask that question, when my wife listens to this, or she is listening, she's going to laugh because she already knows the answer. <laughs> because it's been the mantra of my life, especially over these past seven years where it became more profound. And we'll get into that story as we have time. But that billboard would say, I can do all things through Ooh. Christ. Wow. All things. Does all mean all? To me, all means all. And if we have time, I can go into that. Would you like me to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Take okay. Off. And for the sake of brevity, I'll, I'll try to give the tip of the iceberg. Oh, just go for the so whole iceberg. Okay. <laughs> in, uh, if I could summarize, I'll say I, in total, I've been through four major car accidents. One where I lost my life and God had to restore my life. Otherwise I wouldn't be here. That point I knew there was something that I needed to do, that there was a purpose for my life and a plan. I didn't know what it was yet. The second, major accident, I lost my ability to walk. So two times as an adult, I had to learn how to walk again. And seven years ago, exactly seven years ago today, I was sitting in my wheelchair and we were in the living room. I was watching television with my wife and I was looking at the state that I was in and thinking about where I wanted to be. I have done so many things in my life and I my foundation was built about hard work and being strong and physically being a strong guy, muscular, and always doing his uh, martial arts and things like that. And I was looking at myself in that moment and I said, I'm nothing compared to what I used to be. There was an eviction notice on my door, but I lost everything. I lost my career. I lost my health. I lost my wealth and the money that we had in reserves went to medical bills. So mm -hmm. sitting there with a wife, two children, mind you, a pregnant wife who was about to give birth to our third child, two children. I had nothing but an eviction notice on my door. And I started praying and I came into tears and I said, God, I, this is terrible. I, I have nothing left but you, we've been through every doctor we could. I had a first, second, all the way to sixth opinion. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing more that anyone there can do. But I was losing everything. And I said, God, I need you to work a miracle on my behalf. I need you to heal me so I can take control of my family. I wanted God to do something miraculous in that moment. I wanted him just to get me out of the place I was in and put me to where I wanted to be. Sure. But he did something different. He did something different. He said, son, why should I move this mountain when I can give you the ability to climb it? Oh, whoa. <laughs> I need somebody to write that down. So some of you might be going through that mountain. Down. Come on. <laughs> Some of you guys might be climbing that mountain right now. You want God to get it, get it out the way. 
But what I can tell you now, after having to learn to climb a mountain, everything is a process. And that process you're going through is designed. The process has a purpose. Not only do you have a purpose, the process have a purpose. So write this down. There is a purpose for the process that you are going through right now. Wow. You don't get to glory <laughs> automatically. Sometimes <laughs> you have to go through the process. Mm -hmm. So to that person right now, just, just you wait. Because at the other end of the rainbow, I can tell you it is glorious. So in that moment when I was sitting there and I was talking to my wife and I, I wanted her to take me to the gym, I just knew, I knew that if I stepped out on faith, God would show himself through me. I didn't understand the why, I didn't understand the how, but I just knew what I needed to do in that moment. So she took me to the gym and every day, that's what I would do. I would slide out my wheelchair, crawl on my belly all the way into the water and practice standing. When I took my first step, I knew at that point, I said, I can do this. Even though the end was far, far away, I knew I can do it. I knew I can do it. Like Lao Tzu said, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. And I knew at that moment I took the first step. Like we used to say in our old songs back in the day, if you take one step, he'll take two. Yes. There ain't no secret to what God can do. <laughs> I said, man, you know what? Those those older saints, there weren't there weren't much for uh, grammatics, but those messages, man, they had so much meaning behind them. Yeah. So every day when I went to the water, man, I I, I just stepped in and I said, I want to take one step more than I did the day before. Wow. And we, if we think about the people in the Bible when they were living their life, they only got to live one page at a time. See us as we're looking back on it, we get to turn all the way to the end. We can skip sections and skip chapters. But when you're going through your story, you have to live one page at a time. So every step towards glory has its own purpose in it. Yes. So as you start to look at each step of your life, you'll start to realize everything happened for some reason regardless of how bad it may have seen, there was some good in it, even if it was just to make you stronger. And I say that to say this, before any of this happened to me, I had just received the largest promotion of my career, my professional career. I had just became the, <laughs> the Southern California area manager for the third largest engineering company in the world. Hmm. Wow. So. Professionally, I said, oh, man, I made it. I was the first African-American to ever hold that position. So it was like, wow, man, I, yeah. I did something. Yes. Ah, that's, not, that's not what God had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> my identity was built around my career, but God mm -hmm. said, no, 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 no. See, you're focusing on the wrong thing, son. And I can look back and see this now. See, I was focused on my job. I wasn't focused on my work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good. Say that again. Say that again. Yeah, Focus on my job. Mm -hmm. I wasn't focused on my work. The work that God has for you is what he put in you to do. Your job is just the place where you do that at. Now, I want to relate that to what we were talking about with vessels. My former life, I was in the Navy. I spent eight years in the Navy. And whenever a vessel would go out, First, the vessel doesn't have to set his own course. That course is set by the captain of the ship. That's awesome. And before the vessel hits the seas, it has to make sure, the captain has to make sure that that vessel is ready to take on any amount of water that that vessel is emerged in. We call it watertight integrity. Whoa. So depending on... So, <laughs> so regardless of how much water is introduced to that vessel, the vessel won't take in any of that water. It can rain down on the vessel. The vessel won't take in that water. The water can get so deep. The seas can get so rough. The waves can get so high. But the vessel will not allow any of that water to get inside of it 
Because if the water mm -hmm. begins to get inside of that vessel, if that hole wasn't plugged up properly, then it will consume that vessel and that vessel will begin to sink. So before God deploys you, he has to make sure you're watertight. Wow. So that, he won't, that way you won't sink when he sends you away on your major mission. That is so powerful. And you won't sink. And also the pressure from the outside won't get Come in. On. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the storm is, right? That yes. won't get in because mm -hmm. it made you ready. That's I right. love that that view that ex, uh, of looking at it through the Navy eyes and seeing it as a water vessel. I love that. That is powerful. Oh my gosh. And you, yeah. you know, and sis, I thank God for it because he put that in my life. So there was a time when I was in a gym and I was going through that process. And I got to mm -hmm. tell you, that process was the most painful process I've ever been through in my life. You know, that it hurt so bad, but the pain of where I was was more painful than the pain I had to endure to get where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. The emotional pain of seeing my family lose everything was more painful than the physical pain that I had to endure to be able to walk again. So I just kept walking in faith. And one day, one day I, I needed some reassurance. I was human. So I was sitting there when I would get done from walking and practicing walking underwater, I would get back in my wheelchair and I would sit and I would relax in the sauna, you know, try to recoup and recover. And one day this uh, Latino man came in there, he ran in there a uh, middle-aged guy, Latino guy, he runs in and he was like, oh man, I was looking all over for you. And I'm like, whoa, what do you mean you were looking for me, brother? What? Hey, I'm married, you know? And he, <laughs> said, <laughs> he said, no, no, man, I, I, I needed to find you. He said, I'm, I'm a pastor. I said, oh, okay, okay, what do you got, pastor? He said, listen, God told me to tell you that what you're going through is not for you. He just chose you because you're strong enough to go through it. And he's doing this so that you can bless someone else. Oh, my gosh. So in that moment, what happened inside of you as you're hearing this? My mouth hit the floor, sis. <laughs> <laughs> my spirit, I said, God. Now, I'm, I have to be transparent with you. I didn't jump up and rejoice. I said, God, why me? And God says, son. Why not you? Do you mm. prefer anyone else? <laughs> oh, oh Ooh, my God. I had to shut my mouth. I shut my mouth because no, I don't want anyone to feel what I had to feel. And later, God sent another reminder for me. And I call it a reminder to show me how important this was for him. Not for me, for mm. him. I... There was a time where I made it to the point of where I was able to walk on dry on dry land. And I'm not going to tell you I was coming off the blocks like Usain Bolt and I was sprinting or anything. I used to walk so slow that my grandmother's favorite thing to tell me, she said, come on, baby, let's race. I think I can beat you now. <laughs> <laughs> and she could. <laughs> so, that was the bad part. But I would walk so slow with my little cane and everyone got used to me coming to the gym that way. And it would some people would be very kind to me. Others, maybe not so kind, but that's all right. But one day I was walking to the gym and I wanted to get on the, one of the machines there to exercise. And I tripped and I fell flat on my face. Mm. And when I fell flat on my face, this uh, older lady came up to me and she said, son, can I tell you a story? And I said, yeah, sure. She said, once upon a time, I heard this legend about a young man who would come to this gym in a wheelchair. And I thought she would just kind of put me on at first. And I said, oh, really? Tell me more. And she said, well, yeah, yeah. He would he would get out of his wheelchair and, and crawl into that pool. And from what I heard, he's able to walk to this very day. And when I realized she didn't know that she was talking to that young man, my face lit up. And then I understood exactly what that pastor was saying to me. Yeah. I said, here's someone telling my 
my story to inspire someone that she saw hurting. Oh man. I said, oh God, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry for thinking that this story that you wrote into my life was not meant to be shared in order to help other people. On, so yeah. I say that to say this now. If my story helps one person, mm -hmm. if my story restores the faith of one person, if my story causes one person to believe, then the years of pain that I've endured is absolutely worth it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the scriptures in Ephesians talk about us being seated in the heavenlies with Christ. And literally that that is a, a spot in faith. That's, that's where we live. That, and what that, what that means as you study that out is that we can have his vantage point, which is above all. Mm. Like the, you know, the, the eagle's view or the turkey's view, right? <laughs> yeah. So we, we have the I choice like that. And as to what we're going to do, if we are going to see it through his eyes, through our eyes spiritually, which we want to mm. align with heaven's vantage, heaven's viewpoint, or if we're yeah. going to see it from this lowly single, uh, you know, just from this, there's only just this one single eye view just this if i could use this word just this dimension called today you know like or if we are going to be able to look up higher and see the eternal purpose of what is happening and as you're mm -hmm. saying that that's just what i thought of and how and how god was inspiring you to come up higher and to see it the way he sees it and, and yes. it reminds me of another scripture, Pastor, and just listen to this, y'all, because if you think that God doesn't give life application in scripture, like he won't take a scripture and then make it real in your life and make it contemporary, here is one. The scriptures tell us that God works all things out for oh. good for those that love him. Now, I don't think anybody here doubts whether Pastor Jashan, Jay Sean, excuse me, loves God and whether he did then. And maybe, maybe you're wondering whether or not you do. Can we just help you out? Just side on the side that says you love the Lord. Okay. You don't have to understand what all that means. He'll explain it to you. God will explain it to you. But then when bad things happen, and does anybody ever experience life here? And I mean, maybe that side of life that you didn't want to experience, you know? So... Here it is. You can either blame God and be mad and shake your fist, or you can say, I know that you're going to work this out for good. I know that you're going to turn this test into a testimony. I know that this mess is going to become a masterpiece. And I know that if I endure, that with your help, I can endure, there is going to be lives changed. Like that woman who just uh, comes up to you and she thinks she's coming to encourage you because you fell mm. and she did encourage you. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Here, you have become a legend. <laughs> Man, I said that year to date, that was, a, that was the nicest thing somebody said to me at that point. <laughs> People are said, man, I've been called many things, but not a legend. Yes, yes, that's right. People are watching. They're watching. They saw we you no crawling idea. into the <laughs> pool. They saw you crawling out of the pool. Mm. They saw you taking one step, two step, three steps in the water. Uh, yeah, and talked about it because she yeah. heard from somebody else. She didn't know that was you. Look at God. Look at God. Wow. Now, can I ask you a question? Yes. All right. So you mentioned a couple of times walking by faith. Yes. Now, I want to interject this because I want you to know I can identify with you and then circle back to this question. I'll make it brief. Um, a number of years ago, I injured my back. And due to that injury, mm -hmm. I pretty much, I could walk. It wasn't that I couldn't, but 
I was in a lot of pain and I pretty much had to relearn how to walk. Okay. And I remember calling up my mentor who's now in heaven and saying, Oh, Papa Joe. And I thought he was for sure. Uh, I was having a bad day that day, you know, a, a pain and all that kind of stuff. And I thought for sure he was going to pray some heaven and earth shaking prayer. And, 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 I was going to get up out of the chair or, you know, or he was going to, Oh, Pamela, you've endured so much. And was going to give me that whole thing. And he didn't pastor. I went mm. out about it and I was hurting and it had been a couple of months. And he said, Pamela, and that was the, his inflection. <laughs> you are going to have to walk this one out by faith. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. And he said, you could either be captive to this injury mm -hmm. or you can be captivated by the Lord. But you're going to have to walk powerful. by faith. I heard you say you had to walk it out by faith. Yes. And you so know my what? question I... is, what does oh, that go mean? Ahead. No, okay. What I'm glad you asked that. You? What is that yeah. mean? you to walk it out man by i'm i'm glad so glad you said that and i will tell i will answer that and I'll, I'll share a story as well please do so you know i like what the i would say the greatest little brother that the bible has ever talked about was one by the name of james <laughs> and i call him the greatest little brother because he had a big brother named jesus yeah and we don't know that he we can't see anything that said he followed Christ at the time, but we know it was something after Christ's death that caused him to become a believer. And that must have been something powerful because I know when it comes to family, sometimes family are the last people to believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but with, with James, he wrote something and he said, faith without works is dead. Yes. So I can't say I'm walking by faith if my feet aren't doing anything, because you can't walk sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to share a story. There was a time when I was in my transition moment, when I was still walking on a cane. And I thought, man, God, you've done so much. You've got me out of a wheelchair and I'm on a cane now. Is this the end? He said, no, it's not the end. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go on a fast for three days, nothing but water. And I said, okay. My wife joined me for the first day. And the second day she said, honey, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> so I fasted. I had to do what God said to. And I learned through that process that sometimes isolation leads to consecration, which leads to elevation. Yes. Love it. So sometimes God has to get you all alone and doing a certain thing for him so that he can take you higher. In that moment, I was fasting. The third day we had a revival at church and I went, and I was in attendance and they were doing the altar call. So I was going to get up there so I can help the ministers on the roster pray. And as I was going up there, I grabbed my cane and God said, you're not going to need that anymore. And I said, wait, what's that guy? He said, no, leave it there. So I left my cane alone and I stood up. Oh, I felt God's anointing pour on me and I just saw this white cloud and I couldn't see anything else because at that moment when I felt God's anointing on me, suddenly tears came out my eyes and I just followed the cloud. By following the cloud, my wife saw me in the second person point of view. I was running and walking around that whole entire church. So I went from losing races to my grandmother to walking and running around the whole entire church. Mm. In a moment. Just being obedient to God. So that's what faith means to me. In a moment, one touch from the master. Mm. And it was over. It was over. That was it. The next day I got yelled at by my wife because I was doing push-ups with my baby on my back. <laughs> I couldn't, 
I went from not even being able to hold myself up to doing push-ups with my daughter. She got so mad. She said, boy, God just healed you. What are you doing? <laughs> but I was just so excited and so full of joy. I didn't know what to do with myself anymore. Uh, yeah, no, I hear you. I do, you know, running and doing push-ups just like that. But you know, <laughs> you walked the talk, Pastor. You know, yeah. you said uh, faith without works is dead. Well, that's true. You can't you can't say it if you're not going to do it. And mm -hmm. even if it's a baby step, you just have to keep going one yes. step at a time. Keep moving. Keep moving. That's right. Man, and look at that. Now, that's perfect. I love how you answered that about faith, because mm. I think people kind of, you know, uh, we've heard those stories. Uh, and I love this statement, by the way. Faith it until you make it. And so, you know, saying fake it because we don't want to fake anything. But if we're no. going to faith it till we're going to make it, mm. faith it isn't, dang, isn't, you know, dangling with your feet hanging up in the sky and you're dangling your toes down here somewhere and just, you know, um, you know twiddling your thumbs and fingers waiting for God to do something. If we're going to faith it, we're going to have to put action, even if that That's action right. is simply closing our eyes and visualizing ourselves getting into that pool and yes. seeing ourselves there uh, just like you did and one step after another and through your obedience because that's the part god himself cannot make you obedient mm -mm. only you can make you obedient you're a parent that's right nice. pastor you can't yes. make your that's kids that's listen that's you can give them consequences if they don't. You right. can give them privileges if they do, but you can't make them. You know, right. you ever had your kid kind of, you say, sit down and they're like sitting down, but you look at them and they're like, but on the inside, I'm standing up and you can just oh, see just, it in your eyes. Yeah. You go to the bathroom or anything else, they just, they're ready. <laughs> yeah. They are ready. You know, we can be the same way, right? We have to willingly obey which is of course scriptural in itself god would rather obedience than sacrifice and so that's right man you were obedient and and then what a testimony in front of your whole church you get up leave the pain and then the next thing right you, you're following the glory cloud but everybody yeah. else is seeing you running around <laughs> uh-huh is that something man testing. god is so good god is so good and uh all of these things that would what what would have happened if <laughs> he just would have if it would have just been shake and bake whip and chill you're out of the chair and off and going you know i would have missed out on so much yeah. i mean uh, it's an analogy that I use when I talk about raising children. And I use this for my children. I always say diamonds are formed under pressure. So I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to be fined and refined and or fine tuned to a point to where God can use me to shine anywhere, had He just miraculously gave it to me because I wouldn't have understood the process or the purpose of the process. See, the good thing about going through the process yourself. It enables you to help other people. Mm. So having to discover my purpose that way gave me steps that I can use to help other people. And that's part of what I do now. So when God was putting me through this, it was kind of he was refining me. He, so he, he, sometimes he got to put you through the fire, you know, to burn all that stuff off of you. That's covering up all the, the luminance and the glory that he has within you. So when he can burn and get all that other stuff out and he can polish you, shine you up. Now you're ready to be exposed to the world. Wow. That I love that. I love that. So through the difficulty, you were being refined. Yes. You were being changed. It was like the caterpillar becoming the butterfly. All of these yes. things that were happening. And then you were ready to come out it was time to fly and 
Oh my gosh. And I think about that woman coming up to you and telling you, you were a legend. I'm never going to forget that pastor. Like that, you would not, <laughs> you wouldn't have been a legend had you not I gone can, through I that. I can never forget that. Let's see, my wife, she even made this for me because she said she don't want me to ever forget. Yes. So amazing. Oh, I love that. Yay for her for doing that for you. That is so beautiful. Well, you said you wouldn't be doing today what you're doing today had you not gone through that. So no. what are you doing today? Tell us about that. What is happening in your life and in your ministry? There's a lot because we've got Believers Unlimited, which That's is worldwide. Correct. And mm -hmm. I know you through TIR, through John, yes. it's helped me go thinking into results and I know how much you've done there and um, how impactive you've been in so many lives. So, and plus you have the glory bound missionary Baptist church that you co-pastor at. So what are you doing now that you so, wouldn't have been doing? Well, now I have been deployed. You've been deployed. <laughs> so my, former, my first identity was grounded in my employment. Now mm -hmm. my identity is being formed through my deployment. And what I've been deployed to do was to help other people. One way I help other people is by showing them their purpose or showing them how to discover their purpose. It's already inside of you. God brought you here with it. Like Miles, Dr. Miles Monroe says, we always talk about it. Before you leave Adonai Manufacturing Incorporated, your purpose is already in you. He tested you and made sure that you were made fit to live in this world and to live out his purpose. So now what God has done is he brought all of those things, all of the gifts, all the things he put inside me into the forefront so that I can use them to help people discover their purpose, which I was blessed to do so recently with some people that we know. And that was beautiful for me. It's always a blessing for me to be used by God as a vessel in order to show people what his will is for their lives. So even though I'm the middle man, to this thing that he's doing it is a wonderful place for me to be because I'm just allowing God to work through me. And now that he's taken me through the steps, it's easier for me to unpack things than others. So the best person who can get you up to the top of the mountain is someone who's already been there before. Right. So all those people that want to climb Mount Everest back in the day, I, uh, what's the guy we, we give most of the credit to the, oh, I can't think of the man's name right now, His name but he was known as, I can't think uh, of it. It'll come to one Yeah, he was known as a first, that's right. The first man to be able to climb Mount Everest, he was known for that. But what everyone forgets is that the person who helped him to get up there when he was successful was uh, another person who lived his life on the mountains. Yes. Who, who scaled mountains all the time as a part of his livelihood. So when I look back and I think of the different difficulties that God has brought me out of mm -hmm. and brought me through, it was so as people are beginning their journey and beginning to climb the mountain themselves, I can help them. So in essence, I'm just a guide. God helped me and, and created me to be a guide to other people to show them how to climb the mountain. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful place to be. And he's led me down the path of discovery and showed me different ways to help people to become successful through using the word of God as he wants us to do. Yes. So, so a lot of times when we we forget the word, we forget the word God says, God says that <laughs> that he wanted to prosper us. He, he says he wants to proper, prosper us, give us hope and a future. But we forget about that. And God tells us specifically in this word to forget not all his benefits. Right. But the reason we forget about them because no one is showing them to us. So another thing that I do as a success, a success coach is show people through the word of God, everything that God has laid out for us with promises attached to them in order to be successful. But if we don't use God's law and God's word, then God won't guarantee anything for us. Mm -hmm. What God, <laughs> God sanctifies what he sanctions. Mm -hmm. So good. So when we think when we do things in a kingdom way and the way of the Lord, we follow God's law, then we bring that sanctification into the work that we're doing. And God only warranties and guarantees 
that in which he created. So a lot of times we, we want people to, uh, or we want God to warranty our plans, but as Dr. Miles Monroe put it, he only warranties his purpose. So the purpose that God created into you, now if you want a guarantee for your life, a guaranteed blessing attached to it, live your purpose. Yes. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what God created, and that's what God created you for. If you live your purpose, now you got a warranty and a guarantee. So when God took me through all these mm-hmm. things and wrote these things into my life, Man, the beautiful blessing that was attached to the end of the story was that. That he will allow me to see or give me the gift of insight. I'll say that because a lot of times, here's what I learned. If God shows you someone else's purpose, you can't just come out and say it. You know, that took me some practice. I had to learn that the hard way. (laughs) He'll tell you, but you have to allow them to see it. So there's been people that come to me after the workshop, maybe two days later, some even four days later. I said, oh, my gosh, it finally hit me what you were saying. I see what my purpose is now. So what I've learned and God is always teaching me and refining me. And he's taught me that. Yeah. Sometimes when you see a person's purpose. It's not for you to to tell them. It's for you to show and guide them to allow them to see it themselves. To see the gift in them and kind of pull it out of them, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You said a workshop. So tell yes. us about your workshops. These sound incredibly amazing. <laughs> so the workshop is great. We spend, we take exactly eight sessions. We go into eight sessions. When I walk you step by step into looking at your life from a just a 3,000 foot point of view, And we start to unpack layer by layer the different experiences, coincidences, things that are happening, your gifts, everything about your life to look at the theme, the direction that God is trying to show you in it. Because there's always one and we can see that. I use as a story, I tell a story about, regardless of what I've did, I've always loved to talk. So even there was a time where I used to have these dreams of being a middleweight champion of the world. I used to tell dad I was gonna be the middleweight champion, like Sugar Ray Leonard. And yeah. it was because after they win the fight, they get to talk the longest. I thought that was great. And I, I teased my parents. I said, man, you guys were listening to the message of the Lord because every report card day, I would get this, this strong, uh, what do you call that? Like an epiphany from heaven written across my report card that said excessive talking. <laughs> <laughs> And my par- my parents would respond to that with punishment. I can't believe that God was talking to them through that report. <laughs> they they didn't see it, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, every, I, I just love to speak. And I would always be that person who, let's say when you walk by an individual and they say, hey man, how you doing? And I say, oh, I'm doing good. And you, and I can be, I was, this is when I was 14, 15 years old. This, Oh man, I'm glad you asked. Nobody mm-hmm. ever care about me. And we'll go on and talk for hours. And this grown adult person will end up telling me their whole life story. And wow. somehow I felt something inside of me giving me some insight into what to tell them. And I'm only a teenager, a young kid, didn't even know, you know, uh, but but God knew. Yeah. And he would just in, in each of our lives, there's something to that degree something that you were never able to get away from, even when you tried. Right. And there was something about you that was just a constant, these little pieces, these little remnants and jewels. So what I do, we go down the path of following those, and unpacking those and putting those together. And I give some tools that give people the insight to be able to look into themselves and see what that purpose is. Powerful. Is that online? Is it in person? How do people find right now it? we were doing it in person we were doing it in per, uh, person but now yes we'll be on it will be online okay so at the airing of this show all they will simply have to do is just type in purpose dot dot com and there it is or even if you go down to the website of jshawnspeaks.com and type in or just look for the section that says purpose click okay. anywhere on it and it'll take you right to it you can get started today. I have heard so many testimonies 
from people that have said that that workshop changed the course of their life. So, God is good. Uh, yeah, and he has picked a good vessel because oh, you are willing to uh, pay the price. You know, some we have to be willing to pay the price. Now, I'm not saying that God does bad things to people or anything like that, everybody. Please don't go there. But, you know, the cost of something is not the mm. price tag. It's what it's worth to you. It's what it's worth yes. to you. You know, so you can look at that antique and say, it's worth nothing. I would never pay that. Or you could say, it's worth everything to me. I will pay as much as I need. So, you know, when it comes to the purpose on our lives, how much is it worth to you to develop that? Whether that is investing in a program like Pastor Jay Sean has put together, investing in yourself and investing in that program, or it is being willing to surrender and walk through a difficult scenario, test in your life, a storm, we'll put it that way, and know for sure that you can come out better on the other side and that you can help others along the way. And, and as you come out of it, all that you gathered can change the lives of so many, right? Yes. Power voice. Yes. Our voices are needed, our stories are needed, and people's lives are waiting. There's people waiting to hear from Pastor, and they're waiting to hear from you all out there today as well. Oh my gosh. Well, our time is flying by, but I need to ask yeah. you, is there anything else that you haven't been able to share that you really want to make sure that you get out there? Oh man, so much. Again, we're still on the tip of the iceberg. So. I know. <laughs> we're gonna have to have you come back and do another one. Would you do that? I will. You know what? I can I can make that promise to you. Yes, I'll do that. And I'll tell you what, when I come back, I will promise to tell you about the first experience that I, I glossed over when God restored my life. That would be awesome. Okay. You heard it, everybody. He's coming back. We're going to have part two. <laughs> part two with Pastor where he's going to tell us how the Lord restored his life. Yeah, I wrote that down here. I'm like, oh, wait a second. You lost your life? Yes. I, when people say, are you saved? I'll say literally. Wow. <laughs> So you lost your life. You had to learn how to walk twice. Yeah, we need to come back and just camp on that. So that yes. would be great yes. to do. We'll do that. There was um, a buddy of mine who, my wife, she only, she's only heard that story from me. And for the first one, when walking again, for that first story, when I had to learn how to walk again, there was an eyewitness that was in the military with me. So he came out and visited me. We hadn't seen each other in over 10 years. And she heard the story from him. And I mean, the goosebumps in that room was visible mm -hmm. because it was exactly how I told it to her. And he and I hadn't talked in over a decade. Oh my gosh. But God, Pastor. But God. You know what? Oh, and it caused him to be a believer. That caused oh, him. Oh, really? He like okay. Because he said it's no way. But we'll get into it. We'll we'll <laughs> we'll get into it. Yes, we will. <laughs> so we're going to have you come back and we're going to do this again. And I know everybody okay. is on like, yes, have him come back and do it again. So we really <laughs> want to make sure that you do that. So I have one I more question for you. Sure. I kind of, you're like the purpose guy, right? So mm -hmm. uh, in, purpose is my thing. Purpose by design, not by default. So what does purpose by design mean? Oh my gosh, I can't wait to hear this coming from you and everything that you have gone through. <laughs> what does purpose by design mean to Pastor Jay Sean? Oh, I love that question. That is the awesome. I love everything, everything, including the universe itself, mm -hmm. has a purpose and it was created with the design, and it's the mark of its creator. A design in and of itself is, is birthed in the imagination of the one who designed it. Even your purpose. I like to quote Bishop Clarence E. McClendon, who once said that some of the dreams that you have aren't your dreams that you're telling God. 
It's the dreams that God has for you. That's why they won't go away. And when it comes to your purpose, that was given to you by your creator. So every aspect of your being, who you are, why you are, and what you are, (laughs) is because God created it, it to be so. So what you are and how you are is because of why you are. I'll say that again. What you are and how you are is because of why you are. So certain attributes of your personality, as if you took a personality and you're you're an INJF or ENJF or, you know, all these other personality models, God did that for a reason because he has a purpose for you. He designed you a certain way in which he called perfect. When he made Adam and he made Eve, when he made man and when he made woman, He made them in his image. So as God's design, you bear his mark Mm -hmm. because you bear the mark of your creator and your manufacturer. And the only person who can issue a purpose for a thing is a person that created that very thing. So when your manufacturer created you, he created you for a purpose and he designed you to be able to fulfill that purpose. So everything that you came into this world with that people try to either beat out of you or talk you out of or 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 just try to try to put these limitations on you and bind you. All those things that we bottled up. Were all part of God's purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's why you were designed that way. You can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. You just can't get away from it. If you were a spoon, you were designed to help people eat soup. If you were a fork, you were designed to help people eat spaghetti. It doesn't matter. You can't get away from your design because it was given to you by your manufacturer. So what purpose by design means to me is the manufacturer that created you, created every part of your being for a reason. He called it good. Wow. I love that. Purpose by design. And, uh, you know, a spoon can't help but be a spoon. Is that not the truth? (laughs) You know, I went through years, Pastor, trying to be what I thought everybody else wanted me to be. You know, a square peg round hole. Spoon trying Mm -hmm. to be a fork, right? Yes. Stop and we just say, okay, I surrender. I'm ready to be a spoon. I'll tell you what. You're going to make an impact in this world far greater than you realize that you will make. Oh, my goodness. And you will be so satisfied. I remember thinking I won't be satisfied just being mm. a spoon. I'll just use that analogy, right? Because yeah. you should be this and you should be that. But the minute that you give in to the manufacturer and say, I'm ready to be the most amazing spoon on the earth, you know, that that the happiness and the joy and the peace and the fulfillment that come. And then plus you find out all the different uses for a spoon. Like uh, maybe you just thought it was only for soup, but you know what? You can scoop up some amazing <laughs> ice cream too. And, How about you know, that? <laughs> so much. Yes. Oh, Pastor, this has been so rich. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. And thank you for having me here. Well, and we're so grateful and thankful you were here. And we're so excited to have you back again. And we'll do it soon and very soon because everybody will be anxious to hear the rest of the story. (laughs) As promised, I'll see you next time. (laughs) All right. Thank you again, Pastor Jay Sean. Well, thank you everyone for being here. I told you you were going to be amazed. I told you to have your pen out and your paper out and that you were ready to have some wisdom dumped on you. And so I know that you received and I'm sure you're super excited. And I want you to hold on to this now. And I want you to start to walk it out by faith. And if you didn't know what that meant, you have an understanding right now as you're leaving today. That means that we have to add some action to it. And even if it's a baby step, that's all that it takes to get things going. When that baby learns to walk, everybody screams and hollers and hoots and hollers and the baby takes one step and falls over. 
<laughs> but we can penalize ourselves and think we should just start running, you know? So take those little yeah. steps. Thank you for being here today. And do Pastor and I a huge favor, please. Please, please, please. Subscribe, like, share, comment, because his story, let's take it, let's just have it viral because it needs to be. God bless Purpose you. by design is a whole new world, isn't it? <laughs> yes, hit the button. <laughs> All that you need to follow, Pastor, is in the description, y'all. Remember, you have a purpose by design, not by default. Now go out there and be the salt and the light everywhere you go. See you again real soon. Bye. Ascend Above the Crowd is the newest course by Pamela Hinkle. Ascend is a self-paced email course that will come directly to your inbox and will change your mindset and your life. Each week, you will receive lessons, resources, challenges, and journal writings that will help you discover your purpose by design. It's your time to ascend above the crowd. To learn more about Ascend, go to www.purposewithpamela.com forward slash ascend. Pamela Hankel is the founder of The Purpose Center. Pamela is a mindset mentor, author, speaker, minister, and transformation coach. Her weekly podcast, international radio show, and television show are a lifeline that changes lives and inspires people to discover their individual potential through realizing their purpose by design. Pamela is a natural motivator and has shown many how to find their niche and transform their lives. Although success is an uphill battle, Pamela gives the necessary strategies to flourish, cheering you on every step of the way. Pamela shares from her personal experiences, education, and life as a woman in leadership, utilizing decades of knowledge. Taking the approach of, let's have coffee and chat, she will awaken your dreams and purpose by design. Are you ready for Pamela to help guide you? Email us at purposewpamela.office at gmail.com or go to her website at purposewithpamela.com.